Now that the cinematic universe uh, is so well known, the MCU is something people understand, people enjoy, people like, and I think what people enjoy most about it is that they're all different. We try to make all of these films stand apart. And when we get into Black Panther, it really is unlike anything we've done before. We are introducing a country in the middle of Africa that has been secret for, for, for centuries, um, pulling back those layers and going in to see it and finding a technologically advanced nation um, beyond anything currently on the, on the planet. Um, and yet there it is, right in the middle of Africa. How did that happen? How did they keep their secret? What happens if that secret gets out? Um, how will T'Challa, the Black Panther, deal with the death of his father T'Chaka, as we saw in Civil War, who was killed, by the way, by trying to step out of the shadows, step, step out of the secrecy of Wakanda, and begin to join with the broader world, and what happened? He got killed right away. So T'Challa is not that interested in embracing the larger world right now, um, but he's going to have to. And certainly there are villains that we've met before uh, in some other movies that come into play. There are new villains that we haven't seen before that come into play all on this battlefield known as Wakanda. So what's exciting is we deal with royalty, we deal with royal families, but unlike our other films, it's not on alien planets, it's not in other sort of deep mythological roots like the Thor franchise. It's right here on Earth in this spectacular, amazing African nation. We think it'll be uh, one of the most diverse casts ever assembled for a movie of this size. And again, that's one of the things that's so exciting about it is we get to explore different cultures and different aspects of our, uh, of our, of our uh, world. And that diversity is not just something that is coming about now. That diversity goes back to the Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics was always, we're, again, I've always said, we're just trying to emulate what the comics have been doing so well for so many decades. And one of those things is representing society as it exists. The Black Panther character came about in the 60s, um, uh, uh, around the time of the Civil Rights Movement, around the time of the actual Black Panther Party, um, uh, uh, and how daring it was for the Marvel bullpen and Stan Lee and Jack Kirby to say, we're going to take a character and introduce him, name the Black, pa uh, uh, name the Black Panther, an African character who is smarter than any of our other heroes, who is stronger than most of our other heroes, and who comes from a place which is more advanced and has more intelligence than anywhere else on Earth. And that we finally now, 50 years later, get to put that on the big screen is incredibly exciting for us. We saw what he'd done in the past. Between 42 and Get On Up, there were two uh, representations of, of people that were known to the public, right? Jackie Robinson and James Brown, very public figures, very larger-than-life figures in their own way. I think Jackie Robinson, the stoicism and the strength of his character was something that people who had seen him play or met him in real life really respond to. James Brown, it's sort of that larger-than-life character. So we knew that Chadwick had the acting chops. Um, and we knew that Black Panther needed to feel singular. It couldn't just be a guy off the street who looked good. It had to be somebody who was gonna bring an integrity to the role that felt like a different tone than what Robert Downey brings to Tony Stark, what Chris Evans brings to Captain America, even with what Chris Hemsworth brings to Thor. But again, you never really know until you get on set. You know, we'd had a ton of conversations with Chadwick, who is, I think, so prepared as an actor that he read all the comic books, he came with a list of questions, he had his own ideas of what the dialect should sound like, he had his own ideas of how Wakanda worked. Um, but you don't know until you get on set. And once we started shooting with him, we realized there was something really special. And I think it actually raised the game of everybody else on set. His relationship with Ryan Coogler is such that they have a very strong creative bond. And we knew on our side that we wanted somebody for Eric Killmonger, our main villain, who could hold the screen against Chadwick. So we'd already talked about how intense and, and sort of professional Chadwick is in his scenes. What we couldn't have is a villain that would shrink uh, against that energy. You know, Eric Killmonger is somebody from publishing that we've talked about for a lot of years. He is sort of the main adversary to the Black Panther, and he's someone with his own idea of how Wakanda should work. So here is this fictional African nation that's the most advanced nation in the world, yet is secluded and has sort of uh, cloistered themselves from the rest of the world. And that's something that T'Challa, as the new king, plans to keep carrying on. Well, 
Eric Killmonger has a very different idea of how Wakanda should be positioned in the world and how they should use their resources, both technologically and financially, to change the way the world works. And I think that tension of two men who have two varying degrees of opinions as to how Wakanda works is what the film is built around. We knew that we wanted a really strong central female character and Lupita brings such integrity to everything that she does and she's so strikingly beautiful that we thought that pairing with Chadwick was gonna be really compelling. Uh, and what's great about Nakia is, you know, she doesn't always see eye to eye with T'Challa, so there is some natural friction there that we get to play both for drama but also for some laughs. Uh, and she gets to give a physical performance because the Dora are so active, because they are fighters, uh, and that they can hold their own in any situation. Vibranium is a big part of Wakanda. It's, it's not what makes Wakanda special, but it's how they're able to do what they're able to do. So as you may know, vibranium is the same substance that is made of Captain America's shield, but in Wakanda they have a whole mine full of vibranium. And so you'll get to see vibranium used in a lot of different ways. It's both a material you can build things of, it's a power source to some degree, it allows them to have made these technological advancements that makes Wakanda special. But what we think is really interesting is that it's the people of Wakanda that are their biggest resource. So as much as vibranium and the vibranium mine will definitely play a part in the film, it's actually the Wakandans themselves which makes Wakanda a place unlike any other. Hey, Vali here. Did you like that Marvel video? Do you think Marvel always gets the castings right? Well, did you know that Howard Stark has been played by three different people? Jared Sanders, posed as Stark Senior in photographs in Iron Man. Mad Men actor John Slattery played him in Iron Man 2 and Captain America Civil War, and Dominic Cooper played the young Howard in Captain America, the first Avenger, and Agent Carter. Who's your favorite Marvel character? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. See ya!